Giles Baker, welcome to the Expo Show here at NAB 2009. Thank you. You're with Adobe. Yep. And you guys have a lot of stuff going on here at NAB. Maybe you can tell us a bit what's new with uh, Premiere Pro CS4. Well, we're showing uh, an update to Premiere Pro uh, CS4 here at the show, uh, Premiere Pro 4.1. And there's a couple of interesting new uh, capabilities in the software that allow our customers to Im interoperate with a lot of different um, uh, workflows and really extend the capabilities of, of the software. Um, one of the very interesting things that we've been doing is adding native support for red editing in our software. And we've extended that in, at the show by by allowing uh, compatibility with red files for laptop editing. So our red native workflow allows you to bring in content directly from the red camera and start editing it directly in the timeline. Now when you say editing directly, I'm assuming, are you talking about the proxies or are you, uh, you're, you're not editing 4K? We're talking about the R3D files. Okay. And so what we're doing is importing the R3D files and then allowing our customers to choose what resolution they want to be using. Is there a limit? Those, can you go up to 4K? Files. And you can go up to 4K. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, now, realistically, on a, a decent system, you can get 2K playback. Right. Um, 4K real-time editing is, is not really possible within the, the editor with, with kind of the editorial workflow. But up to 2K is, is absolutely possible on a, on a high-spec desktop machine. The really nice thing about the way this works, though, is that if you're running on a laptop, you can dial down the resolution and get uh, really excellent editing performance with lower resolution versions. But you don't have to swap out proxies or any of that kind of thing. Now, is this uh, working on both platforms, Mac and PC? That is right, yes. So version 4.1 is available for both platforms right now? Indeed. OK, and the, this integration workflow is only 4.1 and above? The integration of, uh, of the red, red with, with the, the multiple resolutions requires Premiere Pro 4.1, right. the update. And we're expecting to ship the update in uh, the at the end of, of May. What other new things do you have available? Well, in, in 4.1, we have um, updates to the uh, SDK that we ship to our third-party partners. And that allows hardware partners such as Matrox, AGA, and Blackmagic to ship full support for HD workflows with, uh, with CS4. We're also also improving the performance with uh, project loading and the ability to handle much larger projects in the software, and so customers will be able to get productive with uh, the software much more quickly um, with the with the new update. What about integration with other formats like XDCAM, uh, EX, and uh, well, P2 cards? XDCAM, EX, and, and P2 are, are already supported fully natively. Um, one of the uh, other enhancements to the way that we work with Red is that you can now browse the content of the RED camera directly inside Premiere Pro. But the other thing that we've added is interoperability with Avid systems. And so we've added some changes to the way that we export and import AAF files, which allows us to, to share media and interoperate very smoothly with Avid Media Composer systems. And also the ability to fully support IMX files within an XF wrapper. And so interoperability with Avid is, is a big focus. As well, well, but that raises a really interesting question is why are you guys doing that? I mean, in, in in a sense, you guys are competing, right? You're both NLEs. But it's interesting you're taking the route of trying to, you know, bridge the gap. So what? what's the strategy behind that? You know, we talk to a lot of customers who have various workflows that they build and optimize to, to whatever kind of projects that they're working on. And a lot of customers are using um, Avid systems alongside Adobe content and uh, Adobe software. And the ability to interchange those projects makes absolute sense. And this is really our philosophy. We want to be an open editing partner that works with all of the industry standards. And so in addition to the Avid support um, with AAF and IMX, we've also added Final Cut export in um, in, sorry, Final Cut import um, in previous versions, and, and in the future we expect to add Final Cut export as well. Final Cut import of sequences from Final Cut? Of XML in, files, yeah. Into Premiere. Into Premiere, yeah. That's very cool. And that gives you the opportunity to use some of the Adobe CS4 workflows around After Effects, right. getting content out to right. Blu-ray, which really aren't available with the Apple workflow. Right. Do you see in, in the long term um, where are you trying to get people to move to Premiere Pro, or do you see that people are really using both like Final Cut and Premiere interchangeably? I think in, in a lot of cases, people are using Final Cut alongside Premiere Pro. We would love to see them using Premiere Pro, but we don't. We understand that there's, there's no real need to change editing systems immediately. And we just want to make it possible to build the kind of workflows that allow our customers to build creative content
that and really wow their clients. Excellent. And if they want to find out more about uh, Premier Pro CS4? Adobe.com. Excellent. Thank you, Giles. Thank you very much.